Hello everyone. It's an honor to greet you here today from Al Ula, a majestical desert region that holds natural, historical, and cultural heritage. I am Noura Dabal, Executive Director of Arts and Creative Industries at the Royal Commission for Al Ula. I'm glad to be here with you today to announce Wadi Al Fan, which means Valley of the Art. The region of Al Ula is one of nine key projects that focus on cultural, economic, and social transformation in the country as part of Vision 2030. Historically, Al Ula was an important trading hub on the incense road. It was the capital kingdom of Dadan and home for the Nabataean city of Hegra, now a UNESCO World Heritage Site. The ancient land stood as a crossroad between East and West for more than 200,000 years of human history. Today, we unlock the next chapter of its rich legacy. We reveal today that Wadi Al Fan will offer a unique experience where art is in dialogue with nature. Wadi Al Fan will include inspiring large-scale site-specific works that bring together pioneers of land art and, and artists at the forefront of the contemporary practices. Wadi Al Fan will truly pave the way for Al Ula's community to access art as a source of education and enrichment. This will happen through job creation, skill development, and engagement with the community. Wadi Al Fan will strengthen Al Ula's cultural economy, inspiring a new generation of arts professionals and enhancing quality of life. Of course, the priority of all projects in Al Ula is the conservation of the natural environment. We are committed to protecting biodiversity and protecting the indigenous flora and fauna. From late 2022, Wadi Al Fan will start its programming through temporary exhibitions, art residencies, public programming, public symposia, bringing together artists, architects, archeologists, designers, and communities. I would now like to hand over to Ivana Blazwick, chair of the Royal Commission of Al Ula Public Art Expert Panel. My name is Ivona Blaswick. I'm a curator, but I've had a lifelong fascination with deserts. Yet I've never ever experienced a desert environment like this one. I'm here in Al Ula, in northwest Saudi Arabia, in what will become the Valley of the Arts, Wadi Al Fan. This extraordinary ancient landscape will become the site of a series of remarkable earthworks created by some of the greatest artists of our time. We'll be in the future seeing an astonishing settlement created by the Saudi artist Manal al Dawayan. She takes her, as her inspiration the ancient village of Al Ula itself, transposes it into this valley of the arts and inscribes it with the stories of the people who lived there. Agnes Dennis, who came to fame in the 1970s by planting a wheat field next to Wall Street in New York, pitching food and plants against capital, will also create a, a canyon of flying pyramids inscribed into the walls of the rock. They will fly like the most exquisite petroglyphs along the surface of these great sandstone cliffs. Michael Heitzer, who is one of the most radical forces in 20th and 21st century sculpture, uh, who has spent 40 years creating a work called City in the Nevada Desert, has come here and found inspiration from the geology and the archaeology of Wadi Al Fan. This is a place of ancient civilizations, of prehistory, of petroglyphs, of the first sign of writing, of hieroglyphs made by travelers who traversed this gigantic desert landscape as part of the incense route. He too will inscribe into the sandstone the sheer facades made as ancient erosion creates sheer cliff faces, he will incise his own particular drawings into the rock. Um, Michael Heitzer comes from America. He'll be complemented by the work of Ahmed Mata, also an artist who uh, lives and works in Saudi Arabia. He takes an ancient phenomena, 
the, 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 the optical illusion of the mirage as his work. The mirage is the Fata Morgana is for him a, a, a manifestation of something in the desert that we go towards. It's something that leads us towards a, a dreamed of destination. For him, it's an image of hope. And he will create a parabolic curve buried deep in the desert floor. And from that, a mirage will, ar will arise. Also thinking about this astonishing sky, we're underneath one of the bluest canopies I've ever experienced in my life. James Terrell, an American artist, renowned for his sky chambers, will also create a series of passageways here in the desert that will lead us through a subterranean tunnel out into a sky chamber that gives us an intense experience of the light, the, uh, the surroundings of this unique landscape. Wadi Al Fan will become one of the most important locations on the planet for land and earthworks created by some of the greatest artists of our time. The desert is a very powerful place. You are left with self. Look at the desert. Look at the silent canyons. Sitting there a long time. And along comes an artist and makes them come to life. This is where you really feel to be on a planet. It is very interesting to interact with a place and a community that has roots that go up to 5,000 years in the past. There's always this interesting fascination of what is their story? What did they say? What did they want? What was their life like? And is there any link between them and me? The first things I was thinking about was I don't want to compete with the nature. It's the main art. Wadi Al Fan means Valley of the Arts. But before any artist arrived here, a great sculptor had already been present. The most powerful sculpture on earth, the wind. Five major contemporary artists have been commissioned to create permanent works of art, and they're inspired by the epic drama of the desert itself. Agnes Dennis became known to every art student in the world through one photograph. It's of a woman harvesting wheat in the shadow of Wall Street. Her work combines the rationalism of numbers and sequences with the spirituality of plant and human energy. My work is not about the objects. It's more about what it can do for humanity. Manal Aldewayan is an artist who's fascinated by the idea of participation. She's always been interested in voicing memories of lost histories. I'm very fascinated by storytelling. Does it always have to be truthful? Does it have to have lessons embedded in it? My upcoming project in Al Ula continues this tradition of looking at the alternative history. Michael Heitzer revolutionized sculpture by expanding it into an environment, making us aware of mass and volume by taking it away. Heitzer's idea of removal echoes the making of the Nabataean necropoli. Having first trained as a physician, Ahmed Mata turned his knowledge of the body to making art. He creates striking images that draw together the human, the social, and the sacred. They want to create a mirage. Mirage for us is the image of the desert. The mirage keeps us going and going.
James Turrell is interested in the Euclidean principles of geometric form and juxtaposing it with the dynamism of the cosmos and of human perception. He is expert in how we process light and colour and how our brains transform these stimuli into an experience of transcendence. All art wants to take you beyond our simple lives and to show you that there's something beyond. Seen in entirety, the experience of being in Wadi Al Fan will be extraordinary not only because of the vast monumental landscape, but also because the artists will take us on an epic journey into the sublime. Thank you for joining us today. As custodians of this land, we must harness the unique legacy of El Ola. It's an honor to be working with such esteemed and celebrated artists in our ambition to develop El Ola as a global destination of art and culture.